Hey everyone, in this example we're going to look at what happens when we want to model the interaction of a binary or a dummy variable and a numerical variable. For this problem, we're going to look at the BP underscore race data, which is in the Chapter 7 data file on eCampus. I will open it here, import data set from Excel, So this spreadsheet has a number of different sheets and each sheet has a different data set. And I specifically want to use the BP race data set. So I'm gonna click on BP race. And now we see in the data preview, our data has changed. And then to make life a little bit easier, I'm gonna change the name of this data set when we import it to BP underscore race as well, just to keep everything consistent. And that also changes in our code preview to now say uh, BP underscore race instead of that really long data file name. And I will go ahead and import that. We now see it up here in our source pane. So now we have all of our data loaded. So high blood pressure is known to commonly occur in individuals who are overweight. It also seems to disproportionately impact African Americans and other minority groups. The American Heart Association guidance suggests that systolic blood pressure or the top number of our blood pressure should be less than 120. So this data set is the result of a survey of 150 men, all of whom were about 5 foot 10 and who are about 55 to 60 years old in the Atlanta, Georgia area. The data were collected on their systolic blood pressure, their weight, and whether or not they were African American. So to get started and to create our first model, the first thing I'm going to do is attach this data set to my working library so that instead of having to prefix everything with BP race, I can specifically call on the individual variables of systolic weight and black. So I'm going to attach BP underscore race. So now I can call on the individual variables without having to prefix them with the name of the data set. Yay. So first we're going to do model one. And model one, we're just going to estimate the effect or the relationship of weight and whether or not an individual is African American on their systolic blood pressure. So our LM function, systolic is our dependent variable. And remember, you can always only have one dependent variable. So systolic is our dependent, and then weight and black are our independent, or our predictor variables in this case. Now that I've run the model, we see that that object, model one, shows up in our environment pane under data, and we can take a quick look at our results using the summary function. So, here we see that both weight and whether or not an individual is black do appear to be highly significant uh, based on their p-values and the uh, significance codes. All three are intercept weight and whether or not the individual is African American have three stars. That means it's very, very, very significant. And we see that we have a very small p-value for the model overall uh, with the f-statistics. So this is looking pretty good. R squared is 0.7126, adjusted R squared is 0.7072. These are all pretty good results. We can, we can feel pretty good about that. Uh, so now let's go ahead and estimate the systolic blood pressure of a man who weighs 180 pounds. We'll both look at a man who is not African American and one who is African American. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to convert my coefficients into a vector that I can call on from R. So I'm going to call this object cofs1. Cofs1, and that's going to be equal to the coefficients of model 1. I'll hit enter, and now we see under the environment pane we have values cofs1. This is a one-dimensional vector of our uh, 
coefficients from our first model. So first, I want to predict the systolic blood pressure of a man who weighs 180 pounds who is not African American. So I'm going to call this object BP180NB, blood pressure 180 pounds, not black or African American. BP180NB1, because it's more from the coefficients of model 1. So now we'll do coefs. 1, because that's the list of vectors we're pulling from. And we want the, the intercept is in the first position. And then we want from COFs 1, we now want the intercept from the number 2 position, which is for weight. And we're going to multiply that by 180, because we're looking at somebody who's 180 pounds. And then finally, we're going to do COFs 1, position 3, and this is the coefficient for our binary variable, uh, whether or not a uh, patient is African American or not. And in this case, they're not, so that's going to be multiplied by 0. And now we see under values, we have BP180 and B1, and it appears to be the number 150. We can then do the same thing. Uh, but predict instead the blood pressure for an individual who's African-American. We'll call this BP180B1. And the only difference we're going to make in getting this value is by changing that 0 to a 1 uh, for the co uh, to multiply by the coefficient for whether or not the individual is African-American. I'll hit enter, and now we see we have a value for BP 180B1 in our environment pane under values, and this value is a little bit higher. It is 157. So we can already see that there is a bit of a difference between the estimated blood pressure for a male who weighs 180 pounds, depending on whether or not he is African American. So we can now try this model with the interaction term for our weight in black variables. But the first thing we need to do to do this is create our interaction variable. And I'm going to call it interaction, or we'll just call it inter. Make it a little bit shorter, make it easier on us. And it is weight multiplied by black. And now we see that under values in our environment pane, we have this inter variable that we can use in our second model or model two. So in this model, we're going to do another linear regression model. Systolic is still going to be our dependent variable. And we are still going to use weight, if I can spell it correctly. There we go weight, black, but now we're also going to use inter, which is our interaction term. Ran that model, we see it now under data. We can do a summary of model two, and we can see that the results are a little bit different. Uh, we see that with the interaction term, uh, our coefficient for black, it's still significant, but it's not quite as significant as it had been in the prior model. And we see that our interaction term has some significance as well. So now we can go ahead and we can estimate the systolic blood pressure of a man who weighs 180 pounds. We can first look at one who is not African American versus one who is African American. Uh, we'll do this just like we did it for the first model. We're going to create an object called COFs2, because now this is the coefficients for our second model. And it is going to be the, our coefficients from model 2. So those now show up. We have one more coefficient in our second model than in our first. So instead of having three numbers, it has four numbers. So let us look at the estimated systolic blood pressure
of a 180-pound non-African-American man. We're going to call this BP 180 NB2 because it's model 2. And this is going to be cofs 2. Our first coefficient is our intercept. And then we'll do cofs 2. Now we want the coefficient in the second position, which is going to be uh, our coefficient for weight. And we'll multiply that by 180 because we know this guy's, he weighs 180 pounds. Cofs 2, position 3 is whether or not an individual is African-American. This individual is not African-American. And then finally, we'll do our coefficient for our uh, interaction term, cofs two, and then in our fourth place. Now, because zero times anything is zero, our value, our, uh, our value that we want to multiply by our uh, coefficient here is going to be zero. That uh, 180 multiplied by zero is still going to be zero. We'll hit enter and we'll see this value created. We see here that in our second model, instead of uh, 150 being the predicted value, now 149 is the predicted value. So we can go ahead and do this with our African American that we're interested in finding a point estimate for. I'm going to hit the up arrow and that will generate the code I used in the previous command. I'm going to make an edit to it. I'm going to take out that N and just make it BP180B2. And then because this individual is African American, we're going to multiply that coefficient for black by 1. And then we're going to multiply the coefficient for our inter uh, our interaction term, we're going to multiply that by 180 because 1 times 180 is 180. And we see that for this, we now get a value of 159 compared to 157. We can see that up here. So that's pretty interesting that our second model uh, made a higher prediction for our African-American man, but a lower prediction for our not African-American man. So we can compare that in the values in our environment window, but we can also go ahead and make a table. We'll call it the table BP. So we're going to create a, a, a matrix of our data and the values we're going to use are BP180, NB1, BP180, NB2, BP180, B1, and BP180, B2. The order matters when you enter in these values to plug them into a table. In my case, I have a clear idea of the columns and rows that I want to use. If you're not sure, I recommend you kind of sketch out an idea of how you want to organize your data and then make sure that you align the numbers of the number of columns with the number of column variables you have. So in this case, my n call, my number of columns is going to be two columns. I'm going to have one column for my model one values and one column for my model two values. And then I want my data to be uh, filled by row. So. I've now created that object. I'm going to create some column names. Call names for BP. Oh, for BP. These are going to be model one and model two. So those are the column names of my table.
Now I'm going to put in my row names. I can type. There we go. Row names. BP. And then my row names are going to be non African American and African American. take a look at getting that table set up and we're gonna adjust our BP object. BP is gonna be formatted as a table. And now we'll take a look at our table by calling it to print the BP value. So here we can compare the specific predicted values for our male who weighs 180 pounds between Model 1 and Model 2. And we can see that Model 1 predicts a higher blood pressure for our non-African American man, but a lower blood pressure for our African American man. And if we want to compare the models side by side to investigate this relationship a little bit further, we can use the Stargazer package, which if you don't have it installed, install dot packages and then in the brackets and quotation marks, Stargazer. So I'm adding it to my working library and then I'm going to use the Stargazer function to look at model one, model two, and the type of table I want it to build for me. Type is a text table. So this is our table that compares the different results of model one and model two. Uh, we see there is a blank area in model one where the interaction term is for model two. That's completely fine. It just means that that variable was present in model two, but not in model one. And we can look at the different levels of significant for our independent variables, as well as our coefficient. We can look at our R squared and our adjusted R squared. And here we see that even though we have the uh, additional variable, the interaction term in model two, we still find that our adjusted R squared is just a little bit better. Uh, and adjusted R squared is what we're going to be looking at in a multiple regression model. And we see that our residual standard error is a little bit smaller in mo Model 2. Overall, Model 2 is probably just a little bit of a better fit, but it is pretty close in the scenario. If you had a model that had a ton of variables in it, you might see a little more variation and perhaps a little more excitement in your results. But in this case, it looks like model two is just a pinch better in this scenario. So I hope that helped you understand how interaction terms work when we have one numerical and one binary variable that we are looking for an interaction of. Hope that helps and I'll catch you next time.